Hey, Fort Niner fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Chat Sports, and today, let's go ahead and jump into the full list of all the unrestricted free agents San Francisco is going to have to either resign or just let walk into free agency. It's a very long list. We'll go ahead and jump right into that right now. As you see on your screen, 27 unrestricted free agents this offseason. Yes, that is a high number. A lot of teams have 10, 12, 15, 20, 27 is a ton. We're going to go through them one by one here, but it all comes down to who they want to keep, who they want to actually spend money on, and who might be not worth spending money on and let them go into free agency. Right now, about $14.7 million in free cap space. Not bad. That's 12th most in the National Football League. Obviously, that can change with contracts being adjusted. So don't just say, okay, we only have 14.7 because, again, that can become higher or lower based on what they do over the coming weeks and months. And as we know right now, at least nine draft picks. They could get a couple more with some compensatory picks, but it looks like it will be nine. So plenty of, just call it offseason ammo right now for San Francisco. They get guys back from the injured list. They're going to go ahead and re-sign free agents, maybe sign some free agents on the, out, uh, on the uh, external market and, of course, draft people. So plenty of things to go ahead and be excited about regarding San Francisco. And, of course, we're going to jump into all of their unrestricted free agents here in just one second. First, make sure you guys are subscribed because all offseason, we keep saying this, but it's true, we have you guys covered your one-stop shop for everything regarding the 49ers. It's all free, too. So just go ahead and click the red subscribe button down below. You will not want to miss any of the latest news. Again, we have it covered here on the channel. Okay, so I'm going to start with the most expensive free agents, and then I'll work our way down to the least expensive free agents, and I'll give kind of lists of five at a time. We'll talk about the entire list, and I'll give some kind of sights on some more important players on the list in general. So we're not going to go from, like, one player all the way down, because there are plenty of players that's like, okay, he made, like, 600 k last year. We don't really care. We'll start with the most important, therefore being the most expensive in these 2021 free agents, and work our way down. Show me the first list, as you see right here. Here are your five most expensive free agents based on their 2020 contracts that are going to be essentially walking, and if we don't go ahead and resign them, you see them there. Trent Williams, Richard Sherman, Solomon Thomas, Joquiski Tart, and Kyle Juszczyk. A couple of overall thoughts here, then we'll dive into some more important things. Solomon Thomas is kind of a question mark here. He was injured, but playing well. I would just resign him on a discounted price, but I do not want to give him big D-tackle, DN pass rusher money like he might want based on where he was drafted because, as we know, he's not really played up to the standard we were hoping he would be whenever we drafted him a couple of years back. I think they let Tart walk in free agency. They're going to be looking for a safety this offseason, whether that's in free agency or in the draft. And then the three other ones on here, Trent Williams, Solomon Thomas, and Kyle Juszczyk, to me, need to be re-signed but at the right price. We'll start with Trent Williams. I think Williams is probably their biggest free agent, the one they are for sure going to go ahead and re-sign. According to multiple reports, they've already had extensive contract talks dating, dating back to like week 16 and week 17 of this year. I doubt he even gets to free agency because you don't want a left tackle to be able to test the open market because some team who is desperate for one will just throw a ton of money at him. I think they get this deal done. Williams wants to go ahead and stay in San Francisco and I feel very confident that he will not be allowed to hit the free agent market. Richard Sherman, a little less confident on here. It's, listen, Sherman's interesting. So a good 2019 a little too injured in 2020, and the problem is, are you going to get 2019 Sherman, or are you going to get injured 2020 Sherman going forward in 2021? He's obviously getting older. He's not getting any younger. We've talked about a, sa a conversion to safety, but he hasn't really kind of talked about that in recent months. I think that's probably out of the picture right now. He wants to continue to play corner. I like him, but I want him to keep him for the, for the right price. I think he has two good years left. Hopefully two healthy years left. And for the right price, maybe a little bit of a, of a veteran discount, bring him back to San Francisco. But if he comes in here and kind of diva e and b is like, give me a ton of money. I want to be paid like one of the top corners in the league. You got to let him walk because the money is just really not in my opinion, there, and it wouldn't make a ton of sense. We mentioned Solomon Thomas again, only playing two games this year after suffering the season-ending injury. If it gets, it's, it's similar to things with Richard Sherman. I want him back, and he'd be a good rotational defensive player on this front four, but I don't want him at a major, massive price, and I don't think he's in a position to leverage a high-demanding uh, price, but we'll have to go ahead and wait and see. Let me ask you guys this down below in the pinned comment. I think these are the five most important free agents. Which of them is the most important free agent? Let me know down below or probably the pinned comment right now. All right, give me the next list here. The next five are kind of some interesting rotational guys, right? Tevin Coleman, Kendrick Bourne, K1 Williams, Tom Compton, and Ronald Blair. If you think about where we start here, let's go ahead and start with, well, maybe first say Tevin Coleman. I don't think they bring back. I think very, very, very simply, 
Coleman didn't do anything this year. He's injured and being benched. They have other options at running back. Coleman, too expensive. He moves on. Kendrick Bourne is kind of a wild card here because you would like to let him go. You don't want to have to pay him again because he's been, at best, a number three wide receiver on this football team. You hope Jalen Hurd becomes the Kendrick Bourne of the future, but as we know with Jalen Hurd, not, you, you know you don't really know what you're going to get in terms of actually being healthy and on the football field. I would bet they let Bourne walk in the end because they do want to see what Jalen Hurd has, maybe even Richie James Jr., but he is kind of this wild card. Do you want to keep him for the right price? Do you want to let him go? And obviously he's been you know, one of the more consistent receivers out there just based on the fact he's not been injured like some of the other ones on this roster. K1 Williams, to me, is a guy you absolutely need to re-sign. He wasn't expensive last year. He'll be a little more expensive this year, but this is the bread and butter of your nickel defense. He is a fantastic slot corner, a great cover corner. The Niners secondary was greatly hindered when he was out with the ankle injury earlier in the uh, NFL season. I think you've got to re-sign K1 Williams. They're all, I mean, obviously... We're talking about like five corners are all free agents, but I think one of the most important ones is K1 because he's just that good in the slot. And there aren't a lot of really good slot corners in the league. There are a lot of decent ones, a lot of man, mediocre ones, but he's a good one. I would re-sign him literally like ASAP. Okay, before we keep going quickly, I'm going to shamelessly plug my Twitter handle here. Follow me on Twitter, at Real Thomas Mott. If you guys are following me on Twitter, that's great because I tweet a bunch of stuff about the 49ers. You can DM me questions. I answer the majority of them. If you're not following me, pull your, your little uh, Twitter devices, your phones right now, and give me a follow. At Real Thomas Mott is the place to go. Okay, next list here. We go to Ben Garland, Kerry Hyder, Ziggy Anza, Jarek McKinnon, and Jordan Reed. I don't think a lot of these guys are going to be brought back. It would be kind of more of if you get them at the right price. I think similarly with Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon is gone. They liked him early. They used him when they had a lot of injuries. But as of late, they went with more Jeff Wilson. They liked Michael Hasty and obviously uh, um, Raheem Mostert. So I think uh, McKinnon is 100% gone. Kerry Hyder is a guy you've got to resign. I mean, Hyder is the definition of earning your pay because he was really the best pass rusher the 49ers had in 2020. Eight and a half sacks. I mean, that's really good. And you could take it eight and a half sacks from Hyder on one side and then obviously move over to Nick Bosa coming back and getting double-digit sacks. That front four is leagues better than what it was minus Nick Bosa. And so I feel really strongly about re-signing Kerry Hyder. I'm a little worried he's going to want a lot of money. He only made a, you know, $1.5 million last year. He just, you know, eight and a half sacks. It's like, hello, I produced John Lynch. Pay me. So I'm a little worried about the price there. But I would do everything I can to re-sign Kerry Hyder because it shows other young players, hey, you're drafted kind of middle of the pack, might be a free agent. You can make money here. You can be a long-term, you know, a key part of our pass rush future or any other position group's future if you perform, and that is exactly what Kerry Hyder did. Drop a like if you guys agree. I, I mean, I think for sure you should go ahead and re-sign Kerry Hyder. Drop a like if you guys think he should get paid. Not crazy, but, you know, respectfully what he deserves based on his, you know, very well. I mean, it was a really good year for Kerry Hyder, even with no Nick Bosa there. He got a lot of one-on-ones and made the most of them, so props to him. Give him a thumbs up. He should go ahead and be re-signed. Jordan Reed is interesting. I liked him at times. I think he was a good red zone target, those four touchdown passes. He's a good complement to George Kittle. I don't think he's a necessity alongside George Kittle. When Kittle's in there, it kind of takes away from any sort of play that Jordan Reed could possibly have. It's very similar to what it was this year. For the right price, you know, a million, maybe a buck five in terms of re-signing him, nothing more. I think he wants to stay in San Francisco and they'll try to go ahead and keep him. But if they were to let Jordan Reed go, by no means is this like a, oh my gosh, panic because the expectation is Kittle's number one healthy and then you don't really need a really big number two tight end who demands a lot of money or a lot of catches overall. Okay, quick shout out to our sponsors for this video. Uh, BetUS, go to chatsports.com forward slash 49 bet and use that promo code Niners125. You put $100 down, or more, and use our promo code Niners125, you get a 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. And you can take that money and bet on the divisional round games. Yes, I'll show you my picks here in just one second. First off, though, reply down below to, uh, uh, or excuse me, give me your three picks for the divisional round by replying to our Chat Sports 49ers Twitter handle. You see here at Chat Sports, if you go 3 0 on your division round picks, and they can be any of the, you know, the four divisional games overall, if you go 3 0, then we will go ahead and give you a shout out on Monday's video. No one got the picks right last week. I did the same thing. No one guessed the wild card picks. They didn't give me three perfect picks. So if you give me three perfect picks for the divisional round, right now at our Twitter handle at, Chats, at, at Chat 49ers, we'll give you a shout out on Monday's video. My picks quickly. 
Bills two and a half versus the Ravens. I think the uh, Ravens got a little bit lucky against the uh, uh, stagnant second half Titans football team. The Browns are going to lose to the Chiefs, I keep saying, but they're going to cover. Plus 10 is ridiculous right now for Kansas City. And the Bucks. I think Brady 0-2 this, this year against the Saints. He's going to figure them out. They're peaking at the right time. Give me the Bucks plus three. They're going to go 100% on this one. As I said, one more time, no one went 3-0 on last week's pick. We're going to run it back again. So give me your three bets right now on the post that you'll see if you go to the Twitter handle at chat49ers and reply with your three betting picks of the weekend. And we'll go ahead and see if anyone gets them all right. That way we can give you a shout out on Monday. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on here to the next five. Again, getting to kind of the cheaper contracts here in 2020. All these guys are free agents again. Uh, Bergstrom, Verrett, Witherspoon, Dante Johnson, and, and, and Grassu. I think the interesting thing here is going to be the, the, the Jason Verrett versus Akello Witherspoon discussion. Because as I said before, there are five cornerbacks who are all free agents. The entire secondary in terms of DBs are essentially free agents. you got to pick a couple. They're not going to let all of them walk. they got to resign a couple of them. And the question is, do you want Jason Verrett, who had the two picks and at times played very, very well? Or do you want the cheaper Akello Witherspoon? Witherspoon, who played less, but still has flashed some decent playtime uh, in the past couple of years. I'll let you guys decide, though. I mean, go ahead and pick one. Do you want Jason Verrett? Do you want Akello Witherspoon? Type JV down below for Jason Verrett. Type AH down below for Akello Witherspoon. I say AW down below for Akello Witherspoon. Personally, I would take Verrett. I think Verrett had proved himself again, kind of like Kerry Hyder, a guy coming off of injuries who hadn't done much the past couple of years. He gets finally healthy and starts and plays well at times. He wasn't perfect, like a lot of people kept saying. He was like, oh, he's one of the better corners in the league. He wasn't great. I like him as a cornerback number two option, whether that's alongside Richard Sherman or alongside maybe like a Patrick Sertan or a Caleb Farley. They want to draft somebody in the NFL draft. Give me Verrett over Witherspoon, but honestly, just pick one. Don't overpay him and make sure the secondary has some decent depth because that was an issue this year with all of the injuries. Okay, final group here. Well, I guess second to last group. We'll go for the the, uh, the next four here. Deion Jordan, Jamar Taylor, Jordan Willis, and C.J. Beathard. The only real discussion here, in my opinion, is what you're going to do with C.J. Beathard. Is he going to be the backup? Nick Mullins is a restricted free agent, so they kind of got to pick between the two. Do you like what you saw from Beathard over Nick Mullins? It's kind of up in the air. Both good, both bad. I would still take uh, Mullins over Beathard, just overall upside, but that's a discussion they need to have for who the backup quarterback is. I guess really who the starting quarterback is, but that's a whole different video. And finally here, Joe Walker, Trent Taylor, and DJ Jones round out the 27 total free agents the 49ers have this year. Again, the majority of these cheap guys like a Walker or a Trent Taylor, I mean, these guys can be re-signed for pennies on, on the dollar and just add depth overall. Whether you need practice squad guys or third string or second string, but some of these bigger names we talked about earlier are going to be the real deciding factors, and I feel confident the Niners are going to want to bring back as many of these guys as they can and then fill in the holes where they go draft with their nine draft picks or go ahead and free agency, which is not something that the Niners do a ton of. They don't go buck wild in free agency in terms of re -sign or signing new players, but it's something to keep an eye on based on the fact they do have some cap space and some ability to move some money around to make room for possible other bigger name free agents coming up here with the start of the new league year. Give me your one player the Niners should 100% re-sign. I keep saying Trent Williams, but I want to know one player they 100% cannot be letting go into free agency that they absolutely have to keep. Let me know who that is down below in the comments section. There you go, though. It's me out for a day here on the 49ers Report. Want to get you guys the full list. 27 unrestricted free agents. We broke them all down for you guys here. I'll read the comments, see what you guys think. Also, check that Twitter handle, for, uh, chat. Uh, excuse me. We'll check the Twitter handle to see if you guys get your picks right as well. Chat at Chat49ers, at Chat49ers, and I will see how you guys do for Monday's video. Live Q&A tomorrow night, so stay tuned for that. Ultimately, out for today here on the 49ers Report, I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.